You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. Hello and welcome to episode 96 of the Soul Forge podcast. Welcome to the Soul Forge, a place of silent mystery, quiet contemplation, and outright mayhem. Join your host, Sean Vanderloo, as he guides you through the adventures of living. Together, we'll talk about life and love, sex and dating, joy and heartache, memories and loss, and so much more. Don't worry, it's not nearly as pretentious as it sounds. Get ready for life, the universe, and everything on The Soul Forge. Hey gang, it's Sean, and with me today is... Deidre. Do you almost forget your name? <laughs> I didn't really. I forgot my cue. Oh, <laughs> Sorry. You missed the look that I gave you. Yes, oh. I did. <laughs> okay. It's all good. It's all good. So we are here to have a fun discussion. The last couple of times you were on the show, we, we talked about some heavier topics. Mm-hmm. Not this time. No. What are we talking about this week, Deidre? Let's talk about camping. Because camping season is coming up. Yes. Yes. And we were just sitting here in your uh, kitchen and going through papers and memories. Mm-hmm. And we were gonna. what were we going to talk about? electromagnetic field radiation yes. therapy yes and, and we're like mm, let's not <laughs> i think you said it first yeah because uh, i was going to go with it mm-hmm. but no not today nah. so we're just looking through your uh well we we're talking about memories yes and time capsules and all that kind of stuff and, and you pulled out a book from the 80s where <laughs> yeah. you it was some kind of camping guide, or what yes. was it exactly? It was, uh, I was in Girl Guides. Uh, okay. Um, I followed Girl Guides and gone through to Pathfinders, and those were some of my best memories of camping. Um, that's where I got exposed. Actually, where I was first exposed to camping was through Girl Guides. Oh, okay. Yes. Right on. And then it just expanded from there. Mm-hmm. Um, in high school, we went to Camp Stevens. Um, I can't, I can't remember how long we spent there, if it was a weekend or five days or seven days, but it was away from home, rustic and in the woods and just doing woodsy stuff. It was a good time. It was a great time. Right. Yes. And, and so what we were going to start off the podcast by doing was reading camping according to Wikipedia. <laughs> so everybody has a common frame of reference, yes. but the definition, well, we, first of all, <laughs> We didn't think we needed a definition because everybody knows what camping is, but I wanted to take a look just to see, and it's ridiculous. <laughs> but basically, it consists of spending at least one night outdoors, whether yes. that's in a tent or an RV or something, but it's away from home, uh, and you have to spend the night because if you only go for the day, then it's picnicking or day tripping. <laughs> right. Like, okay. <laughs> All right. And it became popular in the early 20th century for the rich elite and over time, it became more democratic, and anybody could go camping. Right. So, that's a little bit of history of what camping is. <laughs> but if, if you want a ridiculous time, go read the full definition on camping according to Wikipedia, folks. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. But yes, uh, camping. I love camping. Yay! I used to go camping when I was a child with my grandparents. Nice. Um, some of the best memories I have from childhood or camping actually. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about some of your memories of Girl Guides because when I was a kid I really really wanted to be in uh, either Boy Scouts or Cubs or Mm -hmm. something and I never got to. Mm -hmm. We moved around a lot so there was no consistency for being in any kind of thing like that until I got older. Yes. But what was camping with Girl Guides like? Camping with Girl Guides? Um, That was um, Mrs. Joyce. Mrs. Joyce was our leader. Oh. Yes. And Brown Owl was Mrs. Carpenter, uh, was her mother. And she was in charge of brownies, but she was in charge. Yes, in, okay. char- in charge of everyone. And that's what I remember. And, and then just the little things about um, cooking, and we have to wear our blue hats. 
um, when we're outside, make sure we get, had our hats on. And we had tents. Um, we slept in the tents, kept our stuff in the tents, and our stuff get, got wet when it was <laughs> raining. Of course. Because we didn't protect as, as we should have. And, of course, we put it down to experience. That's right, because you don't know <laughs> until you've done it. That's right. But these memories mm. must have really stuck with you, because, what, that's more than 30 years ago, <laughs> and you still remember your leader's names. Yes. That's yes. incredible. Because um, I, I reconnected with them oh. 20 years, at least 20 years later. Okay. Reconnected with them on Facebook and uh, such, yes. and so I was able just to see where they were and and uh, what they're doing with their lives and such as okay. well. If they, if they continued on um, with the organizations and are, just... Are they, were just, they still? Uh, no. No. No, they had not. Yeah. Hmm. So just different, it's just different paths that, that uh, they went on well, in their sure. lives. Mm -hmm. um, Do you remember any specific skills that you were taught during the camping trips? Um, I, I remember the badges. Badges? We ain't got no badges. We don't need no badges. I don't have to show you any stinking badges. Working towards our badges and and earning those. I still have my sash and my badges. Really? Yes. I still have my scarf as well. Wow. Two of my uh, two of my scarves from Girl Guides and from Pathfinders. Also. So that's, that's uh, going into leader going into the leadership as well. Mm -hmm. And I did go into leadership at camp because I became a camp counselor oh. when I was in my early 20s, teens oh. and early 20s. Okay. And one time, there was one summer I uh, got to go to, um, I don't remember, it was with the International Center of Winnipeg, mm -hmm. and I was a camp counselor there, uh, counselor lifeguard Okay. Uh, for them. And that was, uh, that was a wonderful time just because... Uh, people with their families that come out so mm -hmm. children as well as the adults are there and and we're just and we're just away from the big city and and cooking and learning you know what we're also learning just even through cooking right just about cultures right mm -hmm. um there are different cultures and just how they different um just putting things together instead of red beans and rice it's rice and beans um there's more more rice than beans, or when it's red beans and rice, it's more beans than rice. Depending what on what they say that. <laughs> Something like that. It's, it's, it's complicated. Yeah. But yes. depending on what culture the people were from, mm -hmm. different uh, mixtures of recipes. That's right. So you got to learn that. Yes. And you got to be the leader of some of these people as well yes. and teach them things, I'm sure. Yes. Okay. Yes. And mm. we get to take off ticks. <laughs> Ooh, that sounds like fun. <laughs> yes. Ooh. Yes. Okay. We find things, they're crawling, it's just a little tickle. It's like, oh, Okay, something's tickling us, and then at night we realize, wait a minute, that's itchy, and wow! I hear the scream. Yeah. What is it? There's something on my back, and it's lumpy, and it's oh, what is it? Oh, it's a tick. Isn't that where you get Lyme disease from? Yes. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, nobody knew. It wasn't a concern. Big concern, not like not like it is today. Well, no. No. no, everything is so regimented and health conscious and you can't have any fun and all that yes, stuff. Yes, yes. But yeah, when we were mm -hmm. kids growing up in the, the 80s and whatever, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I went with the grandparents to, it was Beals Lake. Okay. It was about an hour from the Sioux where we grew up. Okay. And uh, went with, yeah, my grand, uh, grandfather, grandmother, usually my mom, maybe some uncles, my brothers, a lot of campfires. Mm. marshmallows mm -hmm. and it was a big campground and there was people there from other cities and even other countries and uh, one lady would always give all the kids watermelon so I remember that uh, and then uh, once the kids had gone to bed uh, the grandparents and who knows who else because I was sleeping but they would catch crawdads oh yeah. and put them in a bucket of water Pick off the crabs in the bucket and in the morning, I got to play with the crawdads oh, with, wow. with a little stick and catch it and then put it back in the water. So Neat. that's that's one thing I remember from from that. That was a lot of fun. That would be. Yeah. Did you catch me any crawdads last night? <laughs> yep, here they are. There you go. Yeah. yeah. And then when I got a little bit older, I got, got to catch them myself. Mm. It wasn't as easy as I thought mm. it was. Mm -hmm. no, but they would come to the shore at night. Okay. And that's, that's how you'd catch them. Mm. Yeah. Little 
white, creepy clawed guys. Okay. Trying to... Were they nocturnal creatures? I guess they must have been, because they only came out at night to, okay. to the shore area. Oh. I don't know what they were doing, hmm. but... Interesting. Yeah. And, that's, and that's in northern Ontario, so... Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm surprised that crawdads. Yeah. yeah. It takes me back to my days uh, when I was in Louisiana. Right. Right. Because there's lots there, right? That's, yes. That's what they have. Yes, and they just eat the... They just put the, the crawfish. Yeah. Yes, in, in brine. So just a vinegar with uh, green pepper and oh. add some salt and pepper and just let it soak for a bit. And then you, after they've cooked, mm -hmm. and, and that's their sauce and, and eat. And just shell, peel the shell and yeah. eat. Right. Oh, man, a bowl. You have a bowl full of crawdads or crawfish. We, did, we didn't do that. No. I, <laughs> no we, oh. did, we just played with them. Oh, okay. Or at least I did. Okay. Yeah. You didn't eat them? No. Oh, no, no. Okay. Just, just played with them. Okay. Uh, and then there was uh, a garbage dump mm -hmm. as part of the camp where people would just throw their trash. Mm -hmm. And we would play in that too and see what the things that people had left. <laughs> I, I remember doing that as a kid. And uh, I found an old birdhouse and I wanted to put it up in the tree, but it was broken, so I wanted to fix it. But we were leaving, so I wanted to hide it in the bushes so I could come back the next year and work on it. And uh, the adult said, no, no, put it up in the tree so that nobody takes it. But I didn't, because I knew better, and I hid it in the bushes, and of course the next year it was gone. So. No, the adults don't know what they're talking about. They never about. know what they're talking about. <laughs> of course not. So, you know. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and then I was, I was in Air Cadets for a time, mm. and went to summer camp for two weeks down in Trenton. That's yep. amazing. It wasn't really camp. Per se, yeah. we were all in barracks, and it was marching in the hot, hot sun. Uh, but I remember we went out to some lake area, and we learned how to tie knots and mm. do other things. I can't remember now, because I was, what, 12 or 13, and that's 30 years ago now. Yes. But uh, it, it was two weeks in the barracks, communal living, a lot of marching. It, it wasn't the most fun thing in the world, mm -hmm. but... Uh, it was a good experience to get away for two weeks in the summer. Right, mm -hmm. right. And yet it's carried over because look how, mu how great of a marcher you are now. Y yes. Right? Yes, marching in every day. 25,000 steps a day to give people their mail. Yes. You're right. Yes. Yeah, I guess it came in <laughs> handy as a skill. <laughs> yes. We'll, we'll say that. Yeah. <laughs> Shows you what you're capable of. That's right. Right. Yes, yes, hello. Let's talk about the Flopcast. Every week we give podcast listeners a chance to come and join us in Chicken Town. Where we talk about Saturday morning cartoons, comics and science fiction conventions, music and concert reports, 70s and 80s pop culture, and for no good reason, chickens. Boy, we're weird. Oh, we are ridiculous. We're proud members of the ESO Network, and you can find us at Flopcast.net. Yeah. So that uh, did come in handy, I guess, as this kind of a job. But I got another story for you. Okay. Uh, so grade eight, yes. uh, we had fundraised all year to go for our big uh, trip to Toronto at the end of the year. Mm. But as it turned out, not everybody had fundraised enough. So what did we do? We went to uh, across the river, as we called it, which was the USA, because in the Sioux, it's the twin oh, Sioux, right? Right. So she had a camp maybe 40 minutes on the other side of the border. For those of you who are new to uh, Sean's uh, podcast, the Sioux is also known as Sioux St. Marie. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> That's true. Yes. Yeah. Sioux St. Marie, Canada. Sioux St. Marie, Michigan. Yes. Yeah. So she had a, a little camp there. And uh, we went for the weekend to Brimley, is what it was called. And I had a little crappy tent. And much like you did, we got rained out. <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't. I didn't have a, a rain flap on the tent. It was just a little. Oh, yeah, no. yeah. Oh. And as it turns out, actually, every time I go camping, it rains. <laughs> Almost without fail. Still testing and training, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Story of my life. Yeah. Always getting rained on. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So instead of going to Toronto for a week, mm -hmm. we went to uh, her camp for a weekend and Whoa. got rained on. Yes. Yeah. And you're still standing up. I'm still. Up. I'm still alive. Yes. I survived it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. 
And uh, I think also during the uh, the Air Cadet days, there was a camp about an hour and a half outside of the Sioux. Mm-hmm. And we went there for a weekend as well. Mm. And I, don't, I don't remember it rained, but we had cabins. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was with my one buddy. And we had to bring our own toilet paper. And, <laughs> and as a kid, I was a little shit. So... <laughs> <laughs> so what did, what did what did I do? I, I got him to wrap me up like a mummy in toilet paper yes. and came out of the room <laughs> walking like a like a mummy mummy zombie kind of thing. Yes. Are you a mummy too? <laughs> I don't even know why I did it. It was just a, a total waste of toilet paper. But it's just one of those funny things. And that's uh, that's pretty much what I remember about that weekend is uh I remember throwing spitballs at each other, <laughs> dressing up like a mummy, and trying to catch a peek into the girls' cabin. Oh! <laughs> so that's, that's what I remember. The excitement. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's that's the official mm-hmm. camping. Mm-hmm. But lots still with the grandparents. Mm-hmm. Um, and then as I got older, into my late teens, just me and my grandfather would go. Mm. And it was nice. And there was one time I remember we were out camping. And I think it was the summer before I started university. And uh, came across a stick with a uh, string ta- attached to it. Okay. And we had peanuts. So I attached a peanut to the end of the string on the stick. And I went fishing for squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> and I caught some. Oh! I, uh, yeah, and they would hang on, eating the peanut. And I would lift the stick up like a, like a fishing rod. Right. And they would dangle on the end, upside yes. down, yes. Tr- trying to eat Why the thing. The it was awesome. Oh. Yeah. oh. I made little stick houses for them with peanuts inside. Oh, and, yeah. cool. Yeah. And I really haven't gone camping too much since then. Mm-hmm. I miss it. Mm. I've been collecting camping gear. Like mm-hmm. I got a Coleman stove and I, I don't have a sleeping bag or a tent or anything. But I got oh. a few different things here and there. Kijiji. Lanterns. Yeah. Oh, the land of Kijiji and Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> uh, right. Yes, I really should look into that. Yeah, for 10 or 15, 20 bucks. Right, it's true. Get set up. Because about 10 years ago, I wanted to get back into it. Yes. And uh, when I was still with uh, Bishop's mom, uh, we were looking for tent trailer. Mm-hmm. Never bought one. Mm. But we were looking for one. Mm-hmm. And uh, three or four, four years ago, summer of 2015, mm-hmm. the brothers and I went on our first annual, semi-annual brothers road trip. Because oh. we started doing that. Mm-hmm. Every two years, we try to go somewhere. Mm-hmm. And uh, back in 2015... Curtis wanted to go hiking for our first trip. Okay. Because he'd been asking me for 10 years before that. Oh. Sean, let's go hiking. Mm-hmm. And of course, I live five or six hours away from him, so it's hard to okay. match schedules. But we finally matched schedules, and I yes. said, okay, we'll, we'll do this. So the three brothers, off we went. Yeah. He, he gave me hiking shoes of his, because I didn't have any. Okay. They were half a size too small. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So the first, the first day wasn't too bad. <laughs> But I'll tell you, the second day, it was everything in me just to put them on. And we were supposed to go for another day and another night. Yes. But we got up the the first morning, and it was pouring rain. (laughs) (laughs) Of course, because I was going camping, right? Right. right. Yes. So we we (laughs) packed up the tents and all the stuff, all the equipment, and started hiking out of the thing. Soaked within 20 minutes. Mm. And uh, the rocks were slippery, and my brother Robin Mm. slid down an embankment and almost... Uh, was lost to Lake Superior. Oh, wow. But he caught himself at the last minute on a rock oh, with his goodness. foot. Oh. So <sighs> Curtis was, I don't know, 200 yards ahead of us. And uh, Robin and I are like, I think it's time to make an executive decision here <laughs> and say this camping trip is over <laughs> and we're not going to go for another day and a night. <laughs> so we finally got up to Curtis at a rest stop. Yes. And then we're like, we think we're done. <laughs> and he's like, all right. <laughs> and so later he said, you know what? I would have kept going, but I'm kind of glad you guys said that wasn't enough. Oh, good. Because he, he was experienced. He'd gone with his buddies for years and years. Right. And uh, so I, I'd got a bunch of equipment and mm-hmm. little pieces of survival things for that trip specifically. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I've still got that stuff. Mm-hmm. But Robin says, I'm never going hiking or camping with you guys again. <laughs> so so Robin's out. Okay. Um, in 2017, we did a road trip to, uh, it wasn't camping, it was hotel stays, but uh, okay. we went to uh, see Blondie and Garbage Live in concert. Whoa. And then we went to, um, where did we go? Cedar Point for a couple of days. Mm. And Robin hated that too. Oh, no. So it turns out Robin hates anything that we do. 
<laughs> but okay, as long as you can live with that. And yeah, you know yeah. what to expect now. So this year we're supposed to do road trip to Oak Island in Nova Where's Scotia. Th- oh. oh, you know the Curse of Oak Island, where there no. there's that whole TV show about uh, this treasure hunting thing. People have been looking on this island for 200 years for some pirate treasure, mm-hmm. and they can't get it because mm. it always floods with water, and they can't specifically find where it is. Mm. So they, and they found little rings and gold things and crosses and stuff, mm-hmm. but nothing major yet. Mm. So they want to go see that. Mm. So we're supposed to fly out mm-hmm. and then drive back. Mm. So, but we don't know if that's actually going to happen or not. Okay. Because Robin had lost his job this year and just got a new one, so he's in debt. So okay. <laughs> we're not sure. <laughs> but maybe, maybe Curtis and I will go camping. I don't know. You never know. So, so it's amazing what happens. Yeah, yeah. But I've been trying to collect more stuff, okay. go camping, and yes. The uh, last time I went camping, I think was with my buddy Frank, okay. and we recorded a Rusted Robot episode about it. Oh, neat! Because we, whenever we get together, we always get drunk on Kraken <laughs> and, re- <laughs> <laughs> and record a funny episode. So oh goodness! I think we're due again. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. Great. Yeah. Great. So, uh, yeah, my experience, yeah, going from camping from Girl Guides and Pathfinders, and it's, and it's just expanded after that. Um, You've done it lots more? I've done it lots more, yeah. I mentioned in high school, um, and then I ended up as a camp counselor mm-hmm. as well. And then uh, uh, from there, it um, evolved into, um, I think, our ca- uh, my soccer trips. Uh-huh. Um, th- I looked at that as more of a camp camping experience okay and then uh and then as i got older um i i didn't do it as much and i uh, wanted to um introduce it to my nieces and nephews of course yes yeah so i just set up uh, something in my backyard mm-hmm. got, i got a tent uh, thank you facebook and kijiji right right yeah um tents and sleeping bag that's all that, that's all we needed yeah bring our pillows comforters blankets as mm-hmm. we need to make sure we go to the bathroom right before we go in the tent well yeah that, that's important and you do it in your backyard then, uh, no because no. because I, I remember doing that as a kid too mm-hmm. in our backyard just, oh yeah you know, oh you mean at, at camping home. no no yeah camping oh, like, oh camping ha- sorry like pitching a tent yes yes in the backyard of the house yeah that's what i did in sorry yeah. i'm sorry mm-hmm. i was thinking something different no nope. <laughs> oh boy <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> yes, pitching the tent in the backyard, and and my uh, nephew would help. My niece and my nephew would mm-hmm. help set it up, yeah. and yeah, we and just the etiquette about the tent. Because if you wear your shoes in there, you're gonna put rip it and put holes in it. The and, dirt gets tracked in. Yeah, mm-hmm. dirt gets in there, and you know what lives lives in dirt? Bad things. Ants, mm-hmm. <laughs> ticks, <laughs> ticks, <laughs> beetles. You know, all the things. Earthworms, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. You don't want fun those. stuff, but you don't want to sleep with them. Not really. No, 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 no. They're fun to play with outside, but That's right. not, not not at nighttime. Exactly. No caterpillars and all that, Mos- yeah. and mosquitoes. Oh, so many mosquitoes. <gasps> oh, that's that's what I remember about camping. Yes. All the mosquitoes. Oh, mm-hmm. oh my goodness. So, just, yeah, all we did was, oh man, I remember spraying. We just had this haze, our aura of bug spray. Yes. <laughs> Going camping. <laughs> yes, and then and then when you're finally done, yes. and you get home after the week or the weekend, Yep. You get in the shower, and all you can smell is campfire, <laughs> yes. and, and you have the stickiness of the marshmallows on yep. you still. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And then you see, oh, look at all the bug bites. Yep. Right? You still have bug bites. Oh, yeah. Those don't wash off. <laughs> even, though, even though you're all sprayed up, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it doesn't oh, stop them. man. No. But it was uh, yeah, still fun times now with Julian, and yeah, every at least every summer. Um, the tent is out, pitched up in the backyard. Mm-hmm. It needs to get aired out, you know. Well, yeah, because... It has to get aired out. To get put away Come for on. the season. Exactly. Musty. So we got to so. check it out. Well, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's almost time for camping season again. Mm-hmm. Although some people do camp in the winter. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. I thought about it this winter with all that snow that we had. <sighs> there was so much. <gasps> More than we've had in over 10 years, they were saying. Yes. So... Yes, so that's a great opportunity to uh, to figure something out. Oh yeah, my road trip. Oh, the, the summer mm-hmm. of 2013. 
that was as much as it was fun it was for me to get away and just release because that was also that was a big year as well um because my colleagues had crashed and died in the helicopter. Oh, right. So that, oh man. That so must have been difficult. That was, it was. Yeah. Um, that was back in the May. And so that summer I needed to go. Well, yeah, get out and yes, connect so with nature. You got it. Mm -hmm. So I took my son and my niece mm -hmm. and uh, for two, I planned for two weeks and just road trip. Oh, that's awesome. I rented a tent trailer. Oh, nice. And just marked out different places I could go, mm -hmm. uh, that I could stop. Um, and they were, it were only four-hour drives. That's all, I, that's all I planned each day. Well, that's not bad. So that I can do see a lot. And stop and at different camps. And, exactly. Yeah. Um, just see different cities and all of that. I'd never seen the east, the eastern part of Canada. Mm -hmm. And what an amazing experience that was. Oh, I bet. Yes. But uh, my... My parents and my sister were like, you're a single woman with these two kids going out by yourself. What are you going to do? Uh -oh. You need to keep in touch with us and all of this. So I had tracking on me and everything mm. and they, they could see where we were traveling at any given moment and all of that. Not once did they call, <laughs> call back to say or respond back, great job or you guys look, look great or whatever. Just, so you didn't even know if so, they were reading the messages or not. Exactly. So I'm like, forget you guys. Next time, I'm going some backwoods and just take our tent, and we're just going to go fishing. There you go. Yeah. That's right. Why not? <laughs> yes. Just have some fun. Yes, yeah, exactly. 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 Mm -hmm. So it was uh, Quebec, New Brunswick. Uh, we ate lobster, PEI. Um, where else did I touch into? But Quebec was my biggest surprise. Because I didn't realize it, I didn't realize the mountain range was all through Quebec. Uh, oh, like the Canadian like Shield. The, yes, um, that and it goes down into the states as well. Right. I didn't realize they were the same, mm. right? So, mm -hmm. that's, but it just stunning. You got to see some of the country. Oh my word! Everybody and should the do people that. People were beautiful and just what a grand and amazing experience. Oh, I bet. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I think it's time to get ready for some camping now. You bet. The, we're, we're sitting in the car now. We started in your house. <laughs> but your, your son was singing, and we didn't want to interrupt him because he was in such a good mood. So we're in your driveway in the car, and we're looking around, and the sky is so blue and bright. The sun is shining. I can actually see your driveway because the snow is melted. There's puddles everywhere. This is spectacular. Yes. I, I do. I need to get to Canadian Tire because they have a sale on camping bags. Whoa. Yeah, camp Whoa. sleeping bags, not camping bags, sleeping bags. Okay. Yeah, and they have a bunch of stuff because it's getting to that season. Yay. So I think it's time to wrap up the podcast yes. and prepare for the next adventure. Done. All right. Well, thanks for being part of the Soul Forge again. You're welcome, Sean. And Human Tribe, keep on listening. That's right. Keep on listening, sharing the links. Thanks for coming by. And remember, money is numbers and numbers never end. If it takes money to be happy, your search for happiness will never end. This has been another episode of the Soul Forge Podcast. Find us on Twitter at Soul Forge Pod or email the show via soulforgepodcast at gmail.com. Soul Forge is a production of Sean Vanderloo and Friends. You can find Sean on Twitter and Instagram at Darth Vaderloo. Remember to visit soulforgepodcast.com for all of our social media links and share the show with everyone you know. Thanks for stopping by the Forge. We'll keep the fires lit until your next visit. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network. Be part of the crew and help support our shows by donating to our ESO Patreon or by shopping through Amazon.com or the Tee Public Store, which can all be found at www.esonetwork.com. The ESO Network, your station for all things geek.